but being onshore and being relatively close to producing fields, I presume de-risks quite a lot of the um, of the activity. I mean, what would you estimate the chance of success would be? Well, you know, out here it's it's really not a question of onshore, offshore. We're definitely onshore. Um, and, you know, we, we, we joke amongst ourselves, you know, this is, uh, you know, some of the areas challenging, particularly in the West Island Jug area in Belize, because you're talking about exploring for oil and gas on sharp, steep uh, escarpment edges mm -hmm. with jungle canopies that are 130 feet tall, filled with all kinds of wildlife. Um, we joke amongst ourselves, well, you know, at least it's not Siberia, <laughs> where we've been. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the risk itself really is, is in the subsurface, you know, I mean, we don't feel that the challenges presented to us on the surface from both uh, a risk standpoint and a cost standpoint are as material as the risk in the subsurface. Our, our, primary, uh, our primary concern is getting the subsurface right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what would, what would you estimate then would be the chance of success of drilling? I think we're on the same page with um, our competent person, RPS Energy, with respect to our two primary um, exploration wells. Uh, the first well, which will be Bee Crest, um, I think the company and RPS are on the same page at a one in five. Mm -hmm. um, and on structure A, a one in five. There is a, uh, a third prospect called West Gallon Jug Crest. It looks very similar to Bee Crest. It's set up geologically similar. similar. It has very, looking, very similar looking uh, uh, trap geometry in the subsurface. The issue with West Gallon Jug Crest, you know, is it sits right on the Guatemalan border in northwest Belize. And um, we're not entitled to shoot seismic in Guatemala. Uh, we don't have PSA rights there. But uh, what we do have is we have a large aeromagnetic gravity survey of the area which shows the uh, depot centers of the source rock and the kitchen areas where the oil is generated that fuels the, uh, that, that sources or, or is produced from the producing fields that are on the margin of the basin on the basin's edge. And, um, and to that end, um, you know, because this gravity map exists and we can see the actual depot center plunge to the northwest. You know, we know that we have a structural high on West Gallon Jug. The question is, well, that high basically stops at about two kilometers from the uh, to the west uh, of the prospect, and we couldn't get seismic beyond that. Our competent person said, well, if you can't get seismic beyond that, we can't give you the same risk factor as the others. And we said, well, well, hang on, we've got a gravity map here which supports the origin and location of the source rock which, feels, which, which, which provides all the oil, which generates all the oil which, which is accumulated and produced on the basin margin, on the basin rim. And you're telling us you don't think the source rock exists. His, his view was, no, I'm not telling you that. We just can't see it on seismic and can't risk it as such. And so this is where the company and the company's view of risk differs from that of RPS because we believe the contours on the gravity map, we believe the kitchen areas exist and oil is generated in those areas. Um, we're just not able to shoot seismic in there because we, our PSA rights aren't covered in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. So our intention is to prove them wrong. Okay. And in, in terms of financing for these activities, financing is all in place already, is it? Where we're at today is, is that you know, we've amended our Blue Creek Farm Out Agreement where we've cut our CapEx costs by about 28%. Um, we, uh, we have had an open data room to attract incoming farmers to further assist us from a funding standpoint. And uh, I'm bound by terms of confidentiality, and I can't go into who it is, but we're in advanced negotiation to bring on a Pharmony um, to further reduce that uh, okay. CapEx requirement. Our CapEx requirement target, pardon me, our CapEx target and the requirement to drill uh, is, is in the region of, of about $14 million today. We hope to cut that by another third by bringing in, uh, by bringing in a farming partner. Okay, but you're not, you don't, you're not looking to be carried. Well, into, uh, into I, without having well. to go into the specifics of the farm out, 
uh, itself, again, which is still an active negotiation. Um, basically what we're doing is, is we're, you know, we're looking for a working interest participant where the working in interest participant can provide us something in exchange for that. Uh, normally what happens with a potential farmer needs is they show up with cash mm -hmm. and they make a commitment to a cash ceiling of X and or provide goods and services equal to X and uh, take on the same working interest position. And uh, those are relatively the terms what we're talking about right now. But our whole overall goal is, is to, you know, when you take the sum of the Blue Creek Farm Out Amendment plus participation in this farm down to reduce our capital requirements by, by close to 50 percent, 40, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so to answer your question about funding, with respect to Belize, certainly for the first two wells we're there. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to uh, Denmark, that is a strategy that, that uh, is ongoing with respect to how we continue to fund that. We're funded for our um, seismic operations so far to date. Okay, well it sounds very exciting. So we're, t we're talking only, uh, only a few months away. That's right. Well, from the start of drilling anyway, right. How, how much will each well cost to drill? Well, the base Y2 wells to the mid-Cretaceous will be about $4.8 million a piece. Okay, which is very reasonable, I think, by, yeah, right. by drilling standards. Mm -hmm. So, well, Bill, thank you very much for taking me through that. You're welcome. And best of luck for the autumn. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.